tonight. We appreciate everybody being out with us. Thank God. And see us there on the Facebook channel. You can click like. We're making this on Wednesday evening. It's going to come out Thursday evening. Thank God. We just uh, pray that everybody enjoys the service. Listen to Brother John Sturgill as he has Bible study with us all tonight. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Brother Don Sturgill to come as he would and pray for the sick. Praise the Lord, everyone out there. Praise the Lord. Facebook or internet that listens to our program. We want to send the program out to all of you in the suit. And we want to send the program out to Brother Cody Starter that's been in the hospital in Canada. We want to send the program out to Brother Eddie who's been shut in for a while. And Michelle Swap, she's been shut in. So we want to send the program out to her. Brother Bud Blankenship, we want to send the program out to him and my wife Clara. This time, I'll we'll go to the Lord in prayer. My God, as we call upon your name in the name of the Lord, we just want to thank you, Father God, for the privilege, my Lord, that we have to be able to be in the house of prayer tonight, Lord. And we're going to pray for those, Father God, that are not able to get out, Father God, and come to the house of prayer, Lord. We just pray, oh God, that you look down upon each and every one of them, Lord, and God, that you begin to strengthen them, touch them, Lord, and help them, Father God, to see their need for you, because we know this night, Lord, the time that we're living in, and people need to be thinking about where they're going to spend eternity, Lord, help them tonight, Lord, and to make the best decision, Lord, that they ever made in their life to come and serve you with all our whole hearts, so mind and strength, because we know the God that we're serving is soon coming. He's coming after the church. He's coming after them that has made themselves ready. Now, Lord, look down upon us. Help each and every one, Father God, because we all need more power and strength with you. Now, Lord, we just can't thank you enough for your goodness. You've been so good to us. Lord, you've kept your hand upon us and kept us safe from harm and sickness for many times, Lord, and we just can't thank you enough. Now, Lord, just have your way. In Jesus' wonderful name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that wonderful prayer. This time we're going to ask uh, Sister Debbie Short to come and this my Lord.
asking a lot this time. We want to try to sing. We'll try to sing that song from Brother Chris. Sir, if he's requesting that we sing it. And, uh, I'd like to send it out to Dale and Dalton, too, Dale. We're praying for you, honey, that you get better. Amen. All the church, because this surely is a song called In Times Like These. Amen. It's, it's rough time, but I'll tell you what. God said we'd be able to overcome. Amen. In times like these. seems like they fear everything but the one thing that they don't fear today is they don't fear God if we look around and we see the spiritual things taking place in the world today and we can see everything with our natural eye but we need to look at it with our spiritual eye too because that's what people can't see today they can't see spiritual but you know what I thought about many times it says that there used to be a song America how many's ever heard of that song God bless America Shed his grace on thee. You know what? God is no longer shedding the grace on the United States. Or any other nation that's forgot God. The Bible says shall be turned into hell. Yeah. You know what? We're living in a time today where people don't fear God. They'll run around. They'll do anything they want to do today. But you know what? We need the grace of God. We need to be saying, God, 
do you stir the hearts of each and every one in this land one more time. Lord, help the people see their need before it's too late. Because I know that you're soon to come. And he said to be you ready. People, I'll tell you what today. If you don't know the Lord today, you need to know him. Because we're living in a nation today that has forgotten all about God. Yeah, they say they know God. They say they're worshiping God. But you know what they used to say many times? And I know a lot of people may not like this or may not understand it. But they said this used to be a Christian nation. And it really used to be a Christian nation. But we have left the grace of God where we don't do what God says no longer. And you can see it in the world today if you just open up your eyes and you begin to read God's word. And God begins to tell you exactly what was going to happen in these last days. But I'm going to tell you what, what God says is going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, you're not going to change it. But the only way that you can change things is getting back to the grace of God in this nation. We as a nation and as a, as a so-called church world today have left God. They have forgotten all about God. And I want you to listen to me tonight. He says these words represent the past of America. Instead of seeing God bless America, we need to be seeing God, listen, help America. Because this whole nation, it needs help. It's on its way down. And I want you to listen tonight. Every great civilization, the Roman Empire, it fell. The Persian Empire, it fell. The Grecian uh, uh, Empire, it fell. And you look around and you see why it fell. And you know why it fell? And America has fallen right in the same shape as all these great empires in our, few, in our past had were doing the very same things that those of the empires did. But the reason they failed was moral corruption yeah. in Rome. Moral corruption, overextending their armies, overextending the money. And you look around what they're doing today. What is the United States? They're doing the very same thing, falling in the very same trap that these empires fell in, and they can't even see it. People in the world today think this nation is going to go on and on, but you can't keep printing that money and think you're going to bail yourself out. Right. Our only hope is to turn them back to God. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, Amen. shall humble themselves uh -huh. and pray and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their nation. That is our only hope, is getting back to God. Getting back to the Word of God. That's your answer tonight. That this coronavirus. Now, you need to fear God more than that virus because I'll tell you one time, when you die, then you're going to face the judgment. And you're going to give an account in this old body, whether it did be good or whether you've done evil, you're going to give an account to God. Fear God and keep His commandments because the Bible says, this is the whole duty of man. It's our duty is to fear God and to keep his commandments. But you look around today and you see all these things happening and you wonder what's going to take to wake people up. I believe God's been shaking this whole world trying to wake people up. But spiritually today, people are asleep today. They don't want to come out of their sleep. They want to continue in that world of sin. They want to continue doing what they're doing because they think just because everybody else is doing it, it's all right. But you know what? I wonder many times, even though Matt Noah was a man of righteousness and he preached in the Word of God, and he told him you better fear from the wrath to come. And no doubt the Bible says they was marrying and giving in marriage, selling, and everything like that. And what are they doing today? They're doing everything in the world today. Big, they're big enough to get by with. And still some of them saying that I'm a Christian uh, and still committing sin. Uh, and have never been, had their sins remitted and saying I'm of God. But you know what? If you don't keep God's commandments, you're lying on God. You don't love God. If you did, you'd be keeping his commandments. But people, they want to do it the easy way. And want to do it their way, but you know what? Your way's not going to be good enough. You've got to do it God's way if you want to make it through. Uh -huh. I want to make it all the way to the end. You know what? i got to finish that, that finish line. i got to cross that finish line. I might go across that uh, finish line of hobbling. I might have to go across that finish line of crawling, but I've got to make it to the end. Uh, I've got to make it to the other side. Uh, that's my desire tonight, is to make it to the other side. Uh, and I'll say one thing in the book of Jude. Uh, he said, use compassion. Uh, I'm making a difference, but he said with others, uh, he said, use fear. Uh, uh, pull them out of the fire. Uh, that's what we need to do tonight. We need to pull people out of the fire and show them the way tonight and show 
know what they're doing today is wrong that you can't commit sin and think that you're going to make it in because you're going to come up short. Amen. And I'll say one thing. If we can look at the Word of God and we see God's Word being fulfilled every day, and if you don't believe me, I want you to listen to what He says. Start at the book of Psalms, the book of 19, chapter 19, and verse 17. He said, And the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Do you think the United States has forgotten God? Yes. Don't you think that the United States has forgotten God? And if I'll say one thing today, if we don't turn our ways around and we don't start getting back to God, the old United States, it's going to perish too. Amen. Yes. People today will say, we look at every other nation, all these other nations when we was little, we used to consider them a heathen nation. Now everybody considers us a heathen nation because you know why? We fell right in the same trap. If you look back in the wilderness when God led them through the wilderness, look at all the miracles that God did in front of them that they had seen with their natural eye. But it didn't keep them from doing sin. Right after God would bring them through one thing, they began to look at the other while out in all the nations and they wanted to do the same things that they were doing. And they began to murmur and complain until the wrath of God come down upon them. And everyone is going to face that wrath if you don't change your ways. There's got to be a change made in this old world and in the people today. You look around in the world today and in the churches today, they've taken God from out of the churches uh, and they give him in. They trade him for pleasures of the world and they brought the world into church and they run God from out. They might as well put Ichabod over the door because the glory of God has departed from that house. Amen. They've betrayed God for all the pleasures in the world. You can't buy your way into heaven, children. There's two people out there today to tell you that you pay your tithes at church and you're going to make it to heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. That rich man couldn't buy his way into heaven. What makes you think that you can do that? But you know what? You've got to obey the commandments of God. And you look around in the world and why did God destroy the first world? Anybody know? Because of sin. Because of so much violence and corruption that was in the world. You look around in the world today, there's so much corruption, not only in our natural government, but even in the governments and the churches today. Right. They don't want to serve God. They want to do it the way the people Amen. want to serve God. They want everything brought into the house of prayer. But he said, my house will be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Uh, they traded God, just like they said a while ago, for all the pleasures of the world. But you know what? Every nation that commits sin, it's going to fall. And you know what? I believe this old world, this old world is getting sick of sin. It's so shook. It's a sin sick of all the people. So much sin in this old world that this old world is a shaking. God is a shaking, trying to wake people up. But people go on right on doing what they want to do. And you know what? And he, Noah said that that's the way it was going to happen in this day here. The day that you and I are living in, we can see the very same thing. People today, they don't want the truth. You can tell them what the word, the word says, but they say, well, I don't believe it that way. Well, you got to believe it the way God's word says or you're not going. I'm not going if I don't preach it the way the word says and I don't obey God's word, then I'm not going either. But I'll say one thing. This word's what's going to face you in that last day when you stand before God and you can't say that I didn't know. If somebody had enough guts to get up here and tell you what the word of God says, then you better obey what what God's word says because God's word is going to have the final say. Yes, and I'll say one thing you might depend upon a denomination or on an organization, but I'll say one thing today the Bible says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partake of her sins. I'll say one thing, so many people changing the word of God, and you look around today, and then people say, well, I don't care what this says, I don't care what that says, I believe it this way. Well, you better believe it the way God said. He said, holy men of God wrote, as they moved, as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Now, people today are not being moved by the Holy Ghost today. When they get out there and write all these other Bibles, they weren't inspired by God, they was inspired by man. It's because they didn't want to obey God's word, and they put themselves up wanting to be God rather than being what they are, just a man. And I'll say one thing today, children, and I know people call this nitpicking. They'll say, why do you nitpick over what kind of Bible we use? Because God's only got one word. God didn't change his word. If it changed 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost, say 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost, what's wrong with it today? 
But yet people today say, well, I don't believe that. Well, that's God's word. You're saying I don't believe it. And you know what? The Bible says all unbelievers are going to have their place in the lake of fire and brimstone. And I'll say one thing, children. God's only got one way. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God who's Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. You know what? I want to make it tonight more than anything. I want to make heaven my home. And it won't be because I didn't tell you the truth. I want you, you can read right behind me. I want you. I want you. Anybody out there today, I want you to read behind me and make sure that I've told you what the written word of God has said. Listen to what he says. 18. He said, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. 19. He said, Arise, O Lord, and let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Now listen to this one. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. That's all they are is men out there today. But they're out there for one reason. They're out there to deceive you. They're out there, he said, to deceive the very elect if it were possible. And you know what that very elect is? That very elect is you and I. If you're not careful, you can be deceived tonight. You can let your man deceive you, but he's just man. And you know what? We've got to put our trust in God. We've got to do everything that we do. We've got to trust God because he is the only one that will keep us and see us through in this time of trouble. Jeremiah 2 and 13. He said, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hold them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. He said, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it, it is an evil thing, and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Can't you see today how the Lord is not in people today that's committing sin and still, still trying to call, say that I'm a Christian? But I want you to listen to one thing to here tonight. I want to read you this about how the reasons, how the church and God's people have forgotten him today. But listen to what he says. He said, listen, as a nation, we need the grace of God. If America does not return, Back to God, America will perish also. We have failed to bring, listen, here's one reason that we've forgotten God. And we wonder why there's so much violence in the world today. We have forgotten to bring our children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Amen? We wonder why people, children are killing children in the schools. It's because of one thing, the parents have failed Brother Jeremy, they didn't have no teaching at home. They didn't bring their children to church. Now, I know when they get older, they're going to make their own decisions. But it's good to set a pattern. It's good to set an example. How many have set a good example for your children? We tell our children they should go, they should go to church, but the parents don't go themselves. We tell our children they shouldn't be out here carrying on when mommy and daddy's out here carrying on, running in the bars. Smoking their dope, doing everything they're big enough to get by with, right. and telling the children that they shouldn't do it. You are an example to your children. You are an example to your people in the church. How you live, how you conduct your life. You're a pattern to somebody that's watching you. Somebody is watching you. This is, you're the only Bible a lot of people are opening up and looking at tonight. Do you have they see that your attitude has not changed? That you're still doing the very same things that they did? That's what's wrong with the world today. And we wonder why children are killing children in the schools today. Could it be that we spoiled our own children? Could it be that we spoiled our own children? By not teaching them God's ways? But let them do it because we feel sorry for them. Everybody else is doing it. Let your children do it. That's right. well, you better be careful what you let your children do. That's if they're right. under your roof, you've still got control of that child. Right. Amen? Yes. But if we don't teach the children, then we wonder why they don't know. We're living in a world today where even people that go to church, sin is a mystery to them. You know why? Because somebody's never told them. 
And that's the reason this whole world is in the shape it is today. The devil has destroyed the very morality in the schools, in the homes, that there's no home life. I remember when we as the children, Brother Glenn, we'd all sit down at the table as a family and we'd eat dinner. Today, greed has set in so much that we want so much natural things that we don't have time for the family. That are even our own family, we don't have time to sit down at the dinner table and eat. And I'll face this sometimes, and you know this really gets me. I see that some things can be used for good, some things can be used for bad. And all these new electronic gadgets they got out, they can be used for good, and they can use be good for bad. Amen. When they used to sit around the table and they would talk, have conversations about God, and they would say different things, and all the family was in together around the table. Today, they said they don't speak, they use their phone. They message, use the messenger, talk with each other on the phone. Never sit down as a family to discuss the things about God, how God has turned lives around, how God is changing lives today. The very same God that changed my life, he's still changing people's lives today. Amen. Only thing they got to do is be obedient to the word of God. You know what we get? We look at all the natural things in this old world, but hey, all these natural things, all these things that's out there today, they're all going to burn. Yeah. If you gain all the money in the world and lose your soul, then where are you going to be? Is it worth your soul today? Is it worth your soul? And you look around at how today the, the devil has taken everything out of the church. And we, the devil is replaced with all the pleasures of the world. And people today don't have time to serve God because there's not enough pleasure, not enough entertainment. This is the biggest country in the world. And it's all given to entertainment. I never thought I'd see today when all the entertainment was shut down like it is today over this coronavirus. But it's shut down. What a better time to get in the Word of God and begin to study and begin to see where you're at. Amen. What a better time is it today? People say, I don't have time. God's given you time now. That's right. God's made you time, but you're passing time away. Time's going to be here and it's going to go before you know it. Then where are you going to be? When you face God, you're going to say, Lord, you, the Lord's going to say, you remember the time that I give you to get in that word, but you didn't have time. You looked at everything in the world and said, I've got to get out there and I've got to make the money. But you know what? God is more important than money. God had come and he shed that blood for each and every one of us that we could have eternal life. What's more important than God giving that is eternal life? But you're saying, I don't want eternal life. Give me all the pleasures of the world. But all those pleasures are going to burn. They're going to burn. And then where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? God loved you so much. You know what? There's nobody that will love you more than God. Your own family won't love you as more as God loves you. What's with you? God to come just like I said? He robed his body in flesh and he came down here and he shed that blood. Because he said without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. God loved you so much. And I'll say one thing today. He's calling people today. But people will not listen. And I thought about with Noah, no doubt. They made fun of Noah when he began to preach to him. A man of righteousness began to preach to him. And tell them that the rains was a coming. And the Bible said it didn't rain in that day. Just the mist would come out of the ground and water the ground. But I wonder what they thought when he built that big ship upon the dry ground. No doubt there was a laughing and there was a mocking. But I'll tell you one thing. When that door was shut, it was too late. No doubt when the rains began to fall, some of them didn't fear God then. But when it got ankle deep, I believe they began to get concerned. But when it got knee deep, and then they were scared to death. But they couldn't get in. It was too late. How many people today are going to wait until it's too late? The Bible said the rich man died. And in hell he opened up his eyes. Being in torments. Had all five of his senses. Wouldn't that be awful to go to a place like that? When you can tell and you can look around sometimes and you can touch a hot stove or a fire and you can touch it with your finger and just re reflect, you want to jerk it out. The first thing you think is you're going to jerk it out of there. But if you go to hell, there's no coming back. No coming back. You're going to be lost throughout the cycle of ages of eternity. You're going to burn throughout the cycle of ages of eternity. No getting back. 
He then, I believe, he began to say, the sand, who was it? He said the sand back his brother just dipped his finger in that water and stick it to his tongue to cool his thirst. There'll be no getting back. Sand old Lazarus back. But you know what? This man might have lived in pleasure all of his life, but now it was just reversed. Lazarus got eternal life. He might have suffered in the natural, but you know in the spiritual, he won. Uh -huh. And that's what I want to do. I want to win in the spiritual part. When I face God, I want to hear God say, welcome in thy good and faithful servant. You know what? That means something today to serve God. Yeah. I know people today say, well, I can't give this up and I can't give that up. But you come to God, I'll say one thing, and God changes your heart, you'll want to give it up. You'll want to give it up because you know why? You want that eternal life that God has promised you. And God has promised you eternal life today if you just keep his commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if we love him tonight, children, we're going to keep God's word. Amen? And I'll say one thing today. You need to search to yourself. Sit down. Sometimes when you're by yourself and begin to agonize with God and begin to cry out to the Lord. And I'll say one thing. God will give you a better way. God will show you. But you're the one that's got to walk the walk. When God says to lay something down, and you've got to lay it down. God is merciful God. It's not his will that any should perish. But he said that all should come to repentance. You know what? God knows everybody's names in this country. All around the world, God knows your name. Mm -hmm. God knows where you're at. And if you love God like you say you love God, you'll repent of your sins no matter where you're at. I don't care where you're at tonight. God can reach down and God can pull you out of the life of sin. That's how big and how much power our God has got. Mm -hmm. He's got all power yes. in heaven and in earth. And I'll say one thing, you can say you might be in the barrel, you might be under the barrel, but God's got a long arm and he's got a strong arm that he can lift that barrel up and he can bring you out from underneath that barrel and put your feet upon a solid rock. Are you willing tonight to do what God says to do? Are you all willing to walk in the light as he is in that light? No, you don't clean up every night. You don't lay down everything every night. This is a, a learning thing. You've got to learn of him. But every day that you walk with God, God begins to tell you what to lay down and what to pick up. Uh -huh. We've got to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because children, he's a coming back and he wants you to be ready. And we're closing tonight. I want you to ask you this question. Are you ready if God would come to you for tonight? If he would come for you tonight, are you ready to meet him? If you're not ready to meet God, and you don't have those sins but under the blood, children, everybody will be lost if we don't have that, that to our sins under the blood of Christ. That's how much he loves you. It's your choice. Which way will you go tonight? Every choice that you make in life, there's a consequence that's going to be paid. And you're going to face God. Are you ready? Because children, he's coming. Amen.